hard work. The best of the best have got the power. Watch your goals for the next six months. I've got Chris Hanley here, one of Australia's leading thought leaders, educators, trainers, consultants, call it what you want. The bottom line is he has a view and opinion on real estate and the way that it's done and he's going to share with me today what are the three killers of real estate agents. The first one's blame. Um, it's never anybody else's fault, ever. It's not the vendor's fault, it's not your officer's fault, it's not your boss's fault, it's not anyone. I saw Andrew Bell many years ago, others have heard me tell this story, but I saw him one day speak at a, a leaders conference where he in essence said the moment he decided 100% um, of whatever his success was going to be was up to him, I think it's exactly the same acknowledgement or idea that I got as a business owner and a salesman. So the first is blame. Right. It's no one else's fault. Your right. results, the scoreboard doesn't lie. If you haven't got enough sales or enough listings, you haven't prospected enough, you haven't worked with enough buyers, it's pretty simple. The second thing is that most agents don't understand that what gets you to this place isn't going to get you to that place. Right. So what happens to them, that they cruise along, they've got an energy driven business, which yeah. is all good. They go to the gym, they do all the right thing, and they get to this place, wherever this place is, and, and they stall there. And it's because they think if they continue to repeat what they've done, it's going to get them to that place, and yeah. it doesn't. So, the, so and, and the third thing, and this is the one for me, is that they stop learning. They stop um, going to different people and reading things. They stop getting out of the industry and going looking for other ways to do things. I could go on and give you another seven and eight, but seven or eight, but those three are the significant things. There, there is a fourth, and, and I'll add it here. For some people, I believe what happens with them is that they, they don't introduce what I call proper systems. I've met people who've told me they've got systems yeah. and I said, all right, show me the systems. And when I've gone into them, they actually haven't got systems. They've got bits and pieces of process. A system starts at A and ends at Z. And it, it, I've just noticed with all the great agents, the really good ones, they've got the complete system rather than little bits and pieces. So those four things. Okay. Uh, Chris, you, you, the truth of the matter is people could just replay that three minute piece, which I think it's three minutes, that you went over and you said about um, ruthlessly eliminating excuses and accepting responsibility and the day that you did it and you said that Andrew Bill um, triggered something off to you where you said, enough of this bullshit, I've just got to accept where I am right this minute has got everything to do with me and that real estate is a very fair job. The group certificate, you're saying, is a very fair document. It doesn't lie. It doesn't lie like the scoreboard. And the, the, the longer I sit here and talk to you, there's two other things that, that I left out there. Um, the two other things I left out is this. This is a research fact that's come from, from universities, not from my head. Most people in our industry, but other industries, work to a capacity of between 40 and 50% tops. Yeah. Which in effect means in our industry, between two and three days a week. The other couple of days, you're not working at your capacity. So most people, if somebody told them that, yeah. they'd maybe understand that even though they think they're tired and they're working really hard, they're actually not at capacity. Your mind lies. That's, right. the, that's another thing. And the final thing is this. Most of us wander around, there's, we have 60,000 thoughts a day. Yeah. 50,000 of those thoughts are repeated. Yeah. It's busy in there. Most real estate agents, the inside of their head's like a pinball machine and it's going bang, 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 bang all the time. And we spend all this time trying to get clarity so we think, if you, you, we think through issues and problems in between all the other stuff. The reality and what I've learned is you do not get clarity. Clarity just doesn't come to you. It doesn't drop down like a screen. So for all these agents who know that the business isn't right and they're trying to work out what to do, I'm going to tell you right now, you won't get clarity. You only get clarity after you act. So what happens is you've got an idea that if you do this, it might change. Just do it. Yeah. Stop spending days and weeks looking for clarity because there's too much going on in here. Yeah. So those two, the, 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 we're below capacity and our mind tells us we're at it and we're not. And the looking for clarity, which doesn't come, just act. 
those two things are okay, important. Okay, that's, that's, that's gold. So what you're saying is number one is don't believe everything that you think yep. because there might be a tendency that you're a lot better than what you think you are and you're listening to a lie. Yep. But the second thing, I absolutely, um, geez, that, that, that can resonate with me and that is a lot of people spend more time preparing mm. to do something. Yep. What you're saying is real estate's an action sport, do it, look backwards and things make more sense and you can change things, but don't be the person that spends three hours preparing to prospect and does nothing. Correct. And, and that then clicks in with a whole issue of mindset, Tom. Uh, a lot of people have a, I'm sure everyone's read the, the book, uh, there's a book uh, called Mindset, but in effect it, it, it splits people into, into uh, two mindsets, a, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Yeah. And people in a fixed mindset in effect are exactly as you've described. Yeah, there are people who, who, who each day believe that, that, that their, their, their flight path, their route is predetermined, yeah. as we were talking about over there before yeah. we come on. And then there's this other group of people who believe if they get out there and try and act a lot, even if they make mistakes, that they'll grow through the mistakes. Yeah. What happens with a lot of people who come into real estate, they don't want to make mistakes yeah. for their own reasons, so they, they play safe. You don't grow unless you take some risks and whether it's a different way to do a listing presentation, whether it's being a bit quirky or using humour. One of the one of the Tara who works in my office is fantastic using humour to prospect, yeah. which is left field. A lot of people don't use that. You've got to be quite brave. But taking that risk means that she's got a stronger connection with people and works really well as an agent, which gets her a lot of referral business. Okay. That's absolutely gold. I love that fixed and growth mindset. Um, you don't recall the book. Uh, yeah, Carol Zweck um, is the lady. If you just put into Google, I do, I probably spelled it the wrong way, but put in Mindset into Google, book by, it's Carol, C-A-R-O-L, I think it's Dweck or Zweck. Put it in and, and uh, it'll pop up. Uh, yeah, um, because I think that what you're saying uh, then is also is accepting making mistakes because if you want to succeed, fail faster. Because I think yeah. that's the game that you are uh, uh, sign in for. Um, but growth and greed are two different things. Um, and sometimes, Chris, mm. you know, you, you can have someone that wants to grow because they think abundance and they think opportunity, but there's also that group of person that wants to grow and the way that they think that they grow is by smashing someone else down, you know? Mm -hmm. um, this greed mentality. What do you, I want to I ask you, when, when, when you think of the best salespeople you've met in the country as you travel around, mm. what are some of the things that come in your head about them? Uh, they're quirky, um, they're, 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 they're often unusual, um, they are curious, Curiosity, remember, I, curiosity for me is the single most important skill a real estate agent can have, being curious. Because I don't think a lot of people understand the power of curiosity. If you want to build trust and you want to have a connection with other human beings, then ask them questions. Ask, ask young people when they go out uh, socially, um, the people they remember and form a connection with. If they're a boy or a girl, they'll tell you the person who asks them questions about themselves. So, so the whole issue of curiosity is, is p p particularly important. But what did you ask me then before I went off and talked about that? The qualities that you think of, of the best people that you've met. Oh, yeah. you, and and you, you said quirky, yeah. you said that they're curious. curious. Um, they also have this instant ability to connect, a bit like speed dating. They have this ability to sit down with someone and make them comfortable and they're really, really, really good listeners. Yeah. You know, I believe most listing presentations in real estate um, are uh, a fifth out of an, if it's an hour presentation, the agent speaks for 50 and the, and the client speak for 10. That is the exact reversal of what should happen. So the greatest agents, or many of the great agents I know, they're really good listeners. So yeah. they just, they're not afraid of silence. They're really good with it. They ask questions and they listen. Look, when you think about it, I don't even like the term presenter. Because a presenter's like someone who does the news. That's not actually what we do. No. We're there on a fact-finding mission to help people sell their house, get the best price, uh, give them a strategy uh, that, that builds competition in a market like this. We're not actually there to present. Like, pr presenting's a weird word, don't you think? Oh, absolutely, Chris, because I think, I, think I think what great real estate agents do, actually not real estate agents, I think what great human connectors yeah, do yeah, yeah. is they have the ability 
to make the person that they're talking to feel totally comfortable yes. with who they are, yeah, yeah, yeah. whoever yeah. they are. Yeah. They'll just say, "It's yep. you, you're just I don't I'm not judging you. You're yeah. you're I'm curious. Yep. I like you. I yep. find you interesting. They yep. just have this ability and safe, Tom, and safe. And they feel safe. They it's, do, isn't yeah, it? Because yeah, because yeah. because many vendors actually feel opposite of safe. Correct, correct. And what happens then is. They can't choose between the agents. They've, they've got three in. They all sort of seem the same. No, they don't feel comfortable. You can see it, feel it, watch it. So they just pick us on fees. If, if you go back to a vendor and ask them after they choose an agent, if you ring them up, why'd you choose us? Uh, or why didn't you choose us? Either question are invaluable. They'll often get to that, that thing. And it isn't what we think. It often the reason they don't choose you or do choose you, usually if you unpack it and unpack it, yeah. it comes down to feeling safe that you will look after them. I had an old, I went to a listing presentation with one of my staff a couple of weeks ago, and the lady said to us, and the, late, and the staff member I went with, Sue Reynolds, is the top real estate agent in Byron Bay, and she's a wonderful human being and a fantastic salesperson. But the lady afterwards said that's why we got the business because the woman felt safe. She'd had other people present and whatever, and she was relaxed. They were her words. You know, you, you've got to be good at that. And there's a process for doing that, and it isn't, you don't be in a hurry. You're happy to, to, to listen, um, and, 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 and you take notes, and, and, and you're, in a, you're in the conversation with them. Another thing you said before that's very important is that a human being can sense. Yeah. There's so many distractions today, everyone's off somewhere else even when they're with you, you yeah. can tell. If their phone's not on their lap, they're looking for it or listening for it, right? Yeah. The average 18-year-old college student in America checks his or her phone 221 times a day, Yeah. right? Yeah. So the, the bottom line is, leave your phone, be in the conversation because the person you're with, and this is a, maybe not everyone gets this, the person you're with will sense from the moment you start the conversation whether you're in it or you're not in it. And if you're trying to sell them on all these things and, and you're not in the conversation and they can see your mind going where you, where you are thinking of what you're going to say rather than listening to what they're saying, yeah, there's no trust there. They, they know that. Well, Chris, we're going to leave it on that point. Are you in the conversation or are you out of the conversation? Yeah. Wonderful. See you soon. See you, Tom. Heaps of learning there, but as I say, Ideas without execution are delusions. It's what you do after the video that really matters.